All right, now Genesis 26 continues in saying how blessed Isaac is that he sowed his seed that year and he reaped a hundredfold, which we hear about in the New Testament a number of times, this hundredfold return. And that his, his family has grown, his, you know, his house, you know, his servants and his flocks. And the Philistines are jealous of him because of, of the wealth that he's, he's producing. And so that makes me think about um, what does it look like from the New Testament perspective what wealth is. We know that um, the Old Testament, what happens physically is a great picture of spiritual New Testament truth. For instance, warfare. In the Old Testament, there was actual physical warfare, but not for us, right? We are, well, our enemies are not flesh and blood, but uh, principalities and powers and rulers of the dark darkness, you know. And so, you know, what, is, what does wealth look like for Christians? And I think it's two things. I think it is, is knowledge of God and influence on other people. Um, you know, the two instances that Jesus talked about a hundredfold return in Matthew and Mark is, is with the parable of the sower and the seed that, you know, the word of God is like seed and, and Jesus went out and he, he threw it out and, and good ground, which is our souls. You know, if there was, if there was someone who was, um, symbolized by good soil, they took that seed in and it multiplied 160, 30 times. And he also talked about as disciples of Jesus Christ. If you leave anything for Jesus, you know, you know, think about people in Islam. They are rejected by their family if they believe in Jesus. And, and so many people have to experience so many different things that they have to lose in order to follow Jesus. He said, if you'll do that, you'll reap a hundredfold in this life and the one, in co and the one to come. And you'll get um, eternal life, which is to know God forever. And so, so that's influence, right? And that's, that's a family, that's newness. That's, and, and I think we've all experienced it. Those of us who are disciples of Jesus Christ, we've experienced this hundredfold return that if you had to break up with someone or if you had to lose friends or lose a job or, or you know, you stop pursuing a career because it wasn't what God wanted you to do, we've experienced a hundredfold return or we're experiencing it or 60 or 30 because, man, there, life is just so rich with Jesus in relationships and influence, and that's what we were made to do. We were meant to have awesome relationships. And, and you know, gosh, is there really a good relationship that doesn't involve influence, you know, one way or both ways? And so I think that's what New Testament wealth looks like. And I see that in Paul. I see that in Stephen and Peter and John, that these were men and, and there were women, so many women mentioned in the New Testament too, that, that had this close relationship with God and influenced other people, right? So that's what God wants for you. God wants you to, to know him and to influence other people. So you need to do that. You need to spend time with God, and you need to spend time with other people. You know, if you're not in a small group of people, whether it's a Sunday school class or it's called a small group or a life group at your church or, or however you do church, you need to get into one. You need to be with a group of believers that is studying the Bible together and influencing, influencing each other. It's awesome. And then, you know, you need to spend time with non-Christians. You probably have a job. And, and what a great opportunity that is to influence other people. I've never had to tell people that I worked with that I was a Christian. They could tell. And you even mention it without knowing it. You know, you know, I went to church this weekend. You know, this happened, that happened. But people get to see your life. You don't even have to, to be direct about it. We are indirectly influencing people when we spend time with God and we spend time with other people. So, so do that. Be wealthy in a New Testament way. Grow in your knowledge of God because that brings peace. I love the verse that says uh, he keeps in perfect peace those whose mind is set on him because he trusts in him. So when your mind is on God and on things about God, you're going to experience peace in life. And, uh, you know, Jesus said the truth will set you free. Uh, Jesus also said that the words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. You know, so when God's word is in you and you know him better, it produces life and peace and freedom. And so... I want that for you, and, and, and people are going to want that. And I think a great, um, um, I think this picture of the Philistines being envious of him is a good picture of demons being envious of us because, you know, they've given up the ability to know God. They, they were angels that, that rejected God and followed Satan, and so they no longer know God like we get to know God. And, and I think and they're definitely trying to influence people. Um, in a negative way, and so I think they are just really jealous of the disciples of Jesus Christ because of the spiritual wealth that we get from knowing God and influencing people in a way that will never end, right? And so I think they're jealous, and that's a good thing.